what's even more genius is Mento's <laughs> fucking back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Geeks and Company. Another episode of the After Show. Today, I got this dude over here, Mr. Messiah Complex Cosplay. And yes, I watched episode one of season three of The Mandalorian. And what did um, you think? First impressions. Clear your mind. Loved it. Immediately. First impressions. Loved it. Good. Um, I was watching it with producer Jen. And uh-huh. and can I tell you what her, her comment, I think, was the best? Cool. First thing producer Jen said when the episode ended was, I think there was more action in this one episode than we got in the whole book of Boba Fett. <laughs> I don't know. That that last episode of Boba Fett was pretty damn action packed, but it was. It was. Yeah, but man. yeah, I uh I loved it. Um I'm so happy it's back. Man, it's been over two years. Yeah, yeah, it's been a time, right? So high points, Grogu. I mean, come on. Grogu's just as cute as ever. Yes, um, yes, he is. Bringing in some of the, I don't want to say some of the comedy, but some of the co- comedic relief in the right. episode that was yep. very action-packed. Yep. A lot of Easter eggs. When they go to light speed. Yes. And then you see the space whales. Yes. I'm assuming you notice the space whales. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm not blind. Yeah. They're clearly pointing to the fact that we're getting a Thrawn slash Ezra storyline in Ahsoka. Um, they've actually casted Ezra, apparently. Is that so? Is, so the whales are from the animated stuff? Yeah. Oh. So, oh, so you don't know about the space whales? Of course not. You know, oh, I haven't watched the animated. You've shit. never I'm watched like, Rebels with the fucking whales. Oh, that's a direct reference to that storyline. Yeah, oh, no, picking man. Like, up that, on it. That couldn't have been a cheap effect shot to put in there. That was gorgeous. I gotta think it's gonna lead it somewhere. Gorgeous. Like, I hope yeah, they yeah. show us. I really do. Yes. So, what were your first uh, impressions? Uh, agreed on the action front. Uh, yeah. Very, very action packed first episode. It was there was literally always something going on, um, and there were a couple of little homages to other films I found that I found really entertaining. Really on the nose, but really like, oh, I see what you're doing there. That's mm-hmm. from that, and that's from that. Yeah, first impressions were great. I, I have I have some beefs, obviously. I have one major beef with it, but I, I'm sure it's going to like sort of even itself out. But mm-hmm. overall, they certainly came out of the gate running. No mm-hmm. one can say mm-hmm. they didn't come out of the gate on fucking fire. That first scene would put the helmet on the kid, and then they're on the beach, and then all of a sudden, rawr, this big it was very giant. predictable. Weird like you knew once, yeah, you knew once thing. that big giant alligator thing came out that Mando was gonna come and save the day, right? But yes. they're getting freaking massacred. Well, getting, like, well, it's you know what it's like. It that scene reminds me of all those movies that you see where like you've got this, you've got like super, you got someone that's bulletproof, and guys just keep shooting them. Yeah endlessly because i and i yeah. get it you have nothing else to do to kind of con- try to contribute but this beast is just shrugging off their blaster fire even past Vizsla with the giant friggin gatling gun and nothing yeah. the beast is nothing and they're just like well i'll just keep firing and standing here yeah. again don't run into the cave that's right there just keep shooting it ineffectively until mando sweeps in with the ship yeah and, and blows just it torpedoes away. the shit out yeah. of it yeah <laughs> Uh, I want to point out two, I thought, really funny homages to other films that I yeah. noticed when they reactivate IG-88. Mm-hmm. Clearly a play on Terminator. Mm-hmm. When he's crawling on the floor, say, must exterminate, must, like, mm-hmm. obvious, and they're shooting it and nothing's happening. Clearly an homage to the Terminator films. And then when they go and it's, uh, he goes to talk to the little Babu Fricks, whatever those, I don't, yeah. I don't remember, and, and Zellians or whatever they are. Very obviously a takeoff on the lizard guys from Men in Black. Yeah. Very obviously. Still hilarious. Still the loved worms. it. And I'm the worms, 100%. And I'm sure, again, I know people are starting to diss on the Mandalorian. Like there's too many cute characters or there's too many like callbacks to classic stuff or whatever. I thought but it was it works. Cute. I thought it was funny. I thought it did exactly yeah. what it was supposed to do. Add a little levity into an episode that has so much action that it needed something to break that up. Mm-hmm. 100%. I mean, we even got a dad joke out of Mando, right? What did he, what did he say? Like, oh, I got <laughs> uh, it. That's how you use your head. Oh, <laughs> when yeah. The, when the statue yeah. falls on IG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but even <laughs> when even when the, the Babu Frick character or whatever the Zilla, whatever it is starts making more sense to Mando, like Mando started to pick it up, but grief is still out there trying to translate. Mando's like, like, I, I got it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, and by the way, we obviously have to mention, and, and, I mean, if you're not watching it, I, I get that you wouldn't get it, but yes, this is another show where Pedro Pascal escorts a magical child across a barren wasteland. Don't worry, but Pedro Pascal is the new internet's daddy. That's just who he is. Yeah, the only thing about this is that in The Mandalorian, Pedro Pascal is, is not the guy in the suit anymore. No. No, because he's um, shooting The Last of Us. He's, just he's doing shooting The, the Last of Us. So, yeah. So, it's all the stunt doubles now that are doing the visual work. And he comes in and does just the voice recording at the end. Which, yeah, mad props. Mad shout outs to those stunt doubles for just mm -hmm. maintaining that Western style look and gait. The way he walks. The way he just leans against shit. Like, he's just so casual because he knows he's a badass. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Good on them for mimicking Pedro's walk and style mm -hmm. when he's the Mandalorian to make him look like that old. West I love that scene. You know, I loved that scene with where grief he, and the he, pirates. Yeah, he leans on the yeah. tree. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let, let me hear what you fuckers yeah. have to if say. If this gets out of hand at yeah. all, and then the minute they 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 start walking forward, he leans off like, the tree oh. and he's ready to go. Right? And he actually says, "Do we have a problem here?" Oh like, yeah. He definitely puts the daddy pants principal of the high school pants. Oh on yeah. Point, right? <laughs> and then grief is like. Do we have a problem? Yeah, here? do we have a problem? <laughs> do you know who this guy is? Another mm -hmm. scene that I found really cool that they they had to do to help catch us up. If you haven't watched the Book of Boba Fett, at the beginning of the episode, all the Mandalorians get attacked by this giant turtle alligator thing, and and by giant I mean it was as big as the crate dragon from season two. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Fucking it's huge. Mando sweeps in after it's wiping out fucking other Mandalorians. Mando sweeps in, Din Djarin sweeps in, kills it with his ship because apparently none of these other Mandalorians have a ship. Lands. Everybody's like, oh, it's that guy. Thanks for saving our lives, but fuck that guy. And then he goes in to see the armorer lady. Not a word of thanks. Not a appreciate you coming in and helping us out. Basically just says, you took your helmet off. You were a Mandalorian no more. Understand something. As far as I'm watching this and I'm like, he has his own ship. Clearly none of you have that. He's wearing a head to toe Beskar. None of the rest of you are doing that. And he's just cavorting about the galaxy like he is easily the most six. And, oh, sorry. He has the and he dark, has the dark saber. saber. He is easily the most accomplished Mandalorian amongst their group of Mandalorian about Death Watch he Mandalorians. Is Mandalore. He is yet, the leader of Mandalore. And yet, when he walks into that cave, the first thing she says to him is, "You took your helmet off. You're a Mandalorian no more." Like immediately. Yeah. So it's like she's saying, I don't care what you're accomplished. I don't care even how much further you're ahead or you're than all the rest of us. You're still not one of us until you sort this shit out. Now, in the book of Boba Fett, she made it sound like he just has to go to these waters and it's fine. But in this one, she's like, well, you can't because there's no way to access that anymore. The planet's a cursed piece destroyed. of poison blast or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he's determined to go. And that's, I guess, at the end of the day, you know what? No. Let's get. I, I have two beefs. I'm going to go over them real quick. But you get in here and, and give me. Some yeah. So my uh, my first beef is around. I've got a couple beefs as well. Yeah, um, uh, I've got one, not a beef, but I, I thought it was kind of funny. I was like, oh, what the fuck, la la la, you know. Um, Ig. I do, I do enjoy that. Yep. Like you know, one second is ah. Oh, what, what do you mean you want to rebuild them? Like we, we were lucky to find anything. And then he twists. He's like, hold my beer. Twist two wires, and then yeah, he's alive. Like, he's like, wait, what? Are you doing? <laughs> like, what do you mean? This is all yeah. it took. Yeah. Why did you make him a statue? Why did yeah. you just like? Bip, bip. I, yeah. For I, a guy who doesn't like droids, I thought it was real funny that he was able to fix it so quick and easy, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah, I, I, I thought that was kind of silly. Bo-Katan at the end, mm -hmm. again to me, didn't work. Right. She was out of character. Uh, Bo Katan at the end. What, first of all, what is she just doing in an empty castle? Well, she said everybody left her, like you know. So, what? So, she just table. lives alone in, in her dad's she's old sulking. castle. Yeah, she's, she's sulking. sulking alone yeah, yeah. with nobody left yeah. there. Yep, very out of character. Um, I thought she first thing she was going to do was going to challenge him. I'm, I'm like, if your whole thing is centered on having the dark yeah. saber and you know, she asks him and he says he still has it. Yeah, then why, is why don't you challenge her? him? Fight me for it. Yeah. So he didn't I, have I, to I don't kill know. Gideon to get it. So he wouldn't have to. They wouldn't have to kill each other. She just has to best him. She just has to beat him. Yeah, just to have fight, to beat right? him. Just has to incapacitate him and take so, the saber from him. So yeah. 
So I don't know. Uh, That's oh. that last scene felt like a throwaway. It almost felt like it belonged in another episode. And then they were like, "Well, this episode's only like thirty-four minutes long. Maybe we need to add an extra scene in there." Right. That's what that felt like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did. The whole episode seemed really fast. Yeah. Like when the when the music started, and the end credits rolled. I was like, "What? What? Yeah, what? it's done." Did I miss? Did yeah, I hit the over. space bar? Did I? What did I miss? Yeah, thirty-eight Why minutes so from beginning through to the end of the credits. Like the oh, the episode itself is probably only thirty-three, thirty-four minutes. The whole episode felt like a setup episode. That's 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 probably my biggest beef with it. Yeah. Even though we're moving setup to setup to setup, and it's I understand it's the nature of the show, which is really my only beef from the sh- in the nature of the show. The show plays like a video game where essentially you have a main quest, mm-hmm. which he's which he starts every season with, and then he gets all these side quests mm-hmm. that he has to go on and complete before he completes the main quest. And I get mm-hmm. it. We, we can't have him just fly to Mandalore right away, dunk his head in the waters, and then he's done. And then that's the season. That's two episodes. You got to have him do other shit. But once you, and, and I think in the previous seasons, they did a good job of sort of like weaving that through nat Like it felt like natural progressions from episode to episode to episode. This one felt like they started all the different kind of little plot threads right away IG, Bo Katan, uh, Mandalore, the other Mandalore. Like they started all these little things Navarro, the Pirates, Spot of Lands, the Pirates. Yeah. Everything gets all like the Pirate. Yeah. The Pirate. Like what was the point of the Pirate scene? He has the fight. Then he has the fight out in space. Then he just fucking, I was going to say warp. <laughs> Star Trek time. He's just like hyperspace is away. Tomorrow. And, then, tomorrow. and then we see like <laughs> the Swamp Thing Pirate King, whoever the hell that is. And then, and then that's it. So we know that's so. Yeah, and then the whales, and then yeah. yeah so everything seemed like we're gonna start all these little threads, these little side quests that he's gonna have yeah. to complete. It felt mm-hmm. a little too like here, like you know what I mean. Like it felt like I was kind of getting spoon fed it a little bit at that point. Mm-hmm. It's a minor gripe, but it is. It but you know, when you're talking about a show that is only gonna have a few episodes, and the episodes themselves are so short. You know, I don't mind setting up and I don't mind a little bit of filler if it means we're going to have a fun episode where they're doing something else. But we're getting so little content to begin with, like, get on with the story, right? I don't want to see the bullshit. I want to. But that is kind of what I liked about this episode is that it moved from one thing to the next. There was no time lost in just dilly dallying, right? Dilly dallying. Uh, Oh, that's I'm liking that. That's nice. Yes, yes. But format-wise, we're getting short episodes, and we're getting less episodes. So right. you better move the story along, is what I'm saying. Uh, it, you know, they're, they are. They, they certainly are. They They've 100% just are. It's a lot of little stories, so it's going to yeah. be interesting to see. I did really quickly, though, and I probably should save this for the podcast, but I'm going to do it here. Your theory mm-hmm. about this show. So they were recently talking with Dave Filoni. Oh! Uh, actually, they were talking about Cara Dune at the time. Yeah. Now, he says, and I quote, Now, season three is mainly dealing with Mandalorians and the Mandalorian saga, the Mandalorian tale. There's different characters he's met since Bo-Katan who take a lot more prominence, which makes sense where his arc is going. The story of him and Grogu specifically. The Mandalorian in the title is the story about the Mandalorian and his people. Ah, so it's the Mandalorian people. And his people. So I, 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 I got to think... He's not talking about Grogu. I'm just, I'm not saying. Well, maybe. I'm just maybe. saying. It's from the man himself, so I don't maybe. know if you're going to go two for two in the theories. Either. I feel yeah. like them showing us the kid getting whatever they call it, baptized, indoctrinated. Well, With seeing the kid getting his helmet, yeah. I felt like that was a representation of, that's a foundling, but so is Grogu. Right. right. So uh, what are they going to do? Are they going to put slots in the side so his ears stick out? Like, I don't like put a helmet on that kid. Show me the helmet that's going to go on that kid's head. Come on. We're going to see like Grogu in an armor. There's no way. We're going to see Grogu in an armor before this show is over. All right. I think so. All right. All right. We'll see. I'll take, are you looking forward to next season? Or, or sorry, next season, next episode? I am. Okay. I am. Uh, I'm pretty jazzed. I, uh, I've i missed The Mandalorian. It's been my favorite part of Star Wars for the last, I don't know. How long it's been? Three years no, it's now. Da- it saved Star Wars. There's no uh, question. It saved Star for Wars. me. It has 100. percent I, yeah. I mean, I I haven't hated anything show wise. Let's be honest. Right. Movies right. wise, you know how I feel. But yeah, when yeah. it comes to the shows, I don't hate any of the shows. No, they all have um, elements that I've enjoyed 100 for sure. Yeah, uh, but I've loved Mando so far. 
Well, like we've uh, talked about, the, the, the other shows don't exist without this show. This show was such no. a huge, phenomenal, phenomenon hit globally that it mm-hmm. led to all these other shows. All the cool Star Wars you're getting, kids. Yeah. Because of the Mandalorian. 100%. But thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you tune into the after show. Maybe not next week this time. Maybe in a couple of days. So make sure you stay geeky. And we'll see you next time.